Other questions? Yes. Yeah, that's a koan. Why is that the appropriate reaction to the story? What is it to do with the death of the cat by putting his shoe on his head? I don't get it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense to me. Right. And that's one of the interesting qualities of koans. They're not about making sense. So why bother? Why bother with koans? The only thing, uh, uh, the only way I can address that is a uh, koan practice, for me, has been perhaps uh, the most extraordinary opportunity that I've had in my life. And I can't go and say, it's going to be the same for you as it is for me. But for me, the insights that were arrived at, that we're sitting underneath the thought patterns. We're very powerful. Most of us, like the monks that were fighting about the cat, have a pattern of thinking about what they think is best, what they think is right. Okay? There is an undercurrent under that which uh, we would say what in fact is clear. Not right or wrong, just what's clear. So when we uh, teach, we teach uh, in a grounded manner. Okay. A grounded manner would be in a way that there was a consensus. For instance, if I say the robe is gray, I think I would get a consensus. If I said, the robe is one of the finest pieces of clothing that anyone could ever hope to wear, modern in design, and filled with personal charm and expression, I don't think that most of you would support that. Although maybe a few of you would say, of course, it's a Buddhist robe. Okay. So if we think about grounded and ungrounded in that way, you know, the floor is brown. That's grounded. It's a very nice, smooth floor. That's ungrounded. But if we experience our life that way and begin to focus on, in fact, accuracy rather than theory, the structure with which we uh, begin to engage in the world shifts quite naturally. And if it shifts, what happens is with a koan like that, Nam Chan's holding the cat and says, someone do something to save this cat. A good clear answer appears by itself. You don't figure it out. It just appears. Just like a, uh, you know this uh, lotus flower? There's canoeing out in the Charles River uh, upstream uh, last year and came around the bend in the river and there were all these incredible lotuses. I don't, I don't know how they got started there, but the leaves were perhaps this big and the flowers were probably this big. Those flowers and those leaves appeared all out of the nourishment of the mud and the sediment that's been sitting in that river for hundreds of years. Okay. It appears quite naturally with just the sun, the water, and the mud. If you threw those same lotus seeds into a beautiful pond with a nice sandy bottom, you'd never get a flower. A koan practice for me was like that. There's a lot of mud here. So allowing that nourishment to quite naturally take place was, uh, for me, really a, an incredible gift. And. Uh, the, the other uh, side of that is 
we want to figure out the universe is a very natural trait we all carry. We know what's best for everybody. We just don't know who's making this idea of what's best. So the shift in Zed practice is, who is it that's making the idea? What am I? What is this? Uh, uh, we can see the luggage and we can get caught up in all the stuff that's in the luggage or we can stay, take one step back and begin to say, how does that luggage appear? What is true nature? What am I? And, and one of the qualities that I particularly love about this school is uh, we generally get after I. I am. I like. I don't like. I want. I think. We get after that. Sometimes it takes a while. But the way you get after it is who wants, who makes, who knows? Who has an idea? Who is carrying around this I, my, me? And the best way to get after it happens to be through practice every day, every day, every day, every day, like water dripping on a stone. There's a relentless quality to it. And the easiest thing to do, it's not easy, but the easiest approach to that is whatever you decide you're going to do, just do it. So if you decide that you're going to sit for 10 minutes every day, sit for 10 minutes every day, no matter what. That's your primary nourishment for insight. It's your primary nourishment for conversion of knowledge to wisdom. If you decide that you're going to get up every morning and practice, get up every morning and practice. If you start to write stories to yourself about how you can't get up in the morning or how you don't have time to practice or you know, how, how uh, you, know, you can't do this or you can't do that or it's too cold out or too hot out. Or, if you start to write all those stories, what you're doing is making yourself an enabler. Okay? You're making yourself an enabler. And the, and the whole function of the Zen Center is to take the enabler out of the equation so we begin to just do it. It's really very, very simple, this place. Take that out of the equation then begin to see clearly, hear clearly, awake. Okay. We have a, um, a woman that practices out at Open Meadows named Willie. Some, some of you may have met Willie. She's a wonderful woman. I think she's in her 70s. She goes swimming in Walden Pond starting, I think, in the beginning of May. And I don't think she finished swimming in Walden Pond to almost November this year. And I said to her, whoa, Willie, that, that's a, this is getting pretty cold, isn't it? And she says, oh, yeah, it's cold. But that's what we do, go swimming in Walden Pond. There's a quality of that, okay, that's decide and do it. 